Hey guys, Nick Smith here, and today I'm going to teach you how to dodge and burn using curves. Now, I haven't covered this yet, and I've had some questions on other videos about dodge and burn that I've done on whether or not this method is more accurate or creates a better or worse result, etc. And honestly, dodge and burn is one of those things where there's a load of different ways to do it, but they all kind of get exactly the same results. But I do think curves is a little more flexible. Uh, in case you screw up, you can fix your mistakes a lot easier. And there are more points of adjustments that you can make compared to other ones like the 50% gray soft light that I usually do, which was actually the first tutorial I ever made. And I'll throw a card up for that right now. It's still my most popular as of right now. Uh, and I still use that method for most of my work uh, that I do for myself. So first thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and make a new adjustment layer. And to do that, we're going to go down here to this bottom panel and then we're going to select curves and you can either kind of bend it down this way, which I find uh, a lot of people tend to bend this way. And I find it creates too strong of a curve on the dark area of the photo. So I like to, instead of that, let me actually undo that because it kind of screwed up. Instead of that, I like to drag straight down along the line that's on the middle. And then I like to go about maybe halfway down the square. So somewhere about there. So instead of having it like this, where it's about midway down the square and it's really dark, and move it over so it's just not as dramatic but still doing a nice job darkening the image so now that we have that done let's go ahead and close that out all right let's make sure our layer mask is selected here and then hit Control i to invert it and all that does is it hides it behind this black layer so now what we're going to do is we're going to hit b for our brush tool and we're going to go ahead and hit d for default to make sure our swatches are on white and black and then we can hit x to switch back and forth between black and white as we see fit and when we paint with white, what it's going to be doing is it's going to be actually applying the layer below. So it's going to be darkening. Even though it's white, it's going to be adding black to the image to sort of darken it. And if we hit X, it's going to switch back to black. And what that does is it actually removes the painting that you've uh, put on the layer already. Okay, so now I want to convert the image to black and white. And the reason I like to do my dodging and burning while I have my image converted to black and white is I find it helps you see light and shadow much more easily than when things are in color. And I actually found a new method of how to convert uh, an image to black and white to actually display color luminosity as well as the black and white image. So I'm going to actually quick show you the difference between those two because it's really important when you're doing dodging and burning to have uh, black and white and then to have the color luminosity taken into account. Uh, especially if you're trying to do uh, some smoothing, which is what we're going to end up doing here because we have some shadows that are being cast from the overhead light under her eyes. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make a traditional black and white adjustment layer. And now let's go ahead and create another solid color layer and make the solid color layer just completely black. Make sure your numbers are all zeros. Then go ahead and hit OK. And now go to your blending mode and then go down here and change it to color. And this is going to look basically the same as our black and white for now because it's up top. But what I want to do is I want to actually go ahead and show you uh, the difference that this makes. So here's a traditional black and white layer. And this is uh, the color luminosity is not actually taken into account. So what it is is it's just trying to guess what the colors would translate to uh, in a black and white image. But it's not actually doing a very good job at it. And the reason why is because it has all of these uh, sliders here where you can change what the color data is actually doing in the image. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. And now let's turn on this layer and then let's turn off our original black and white. And as you'll notice, it brightens up a lot in some areas. Uh, so if you like right here on her cheek, see how dark that is right now? When I turn this off, it brightens it up. And that's because it's actually starting to take into account how bright each color is in comparison to what the color range would be and giving you the flexibility because this just takes everything in the image and tries to convert it to pure grayscale, which it does a great job at. And that's why I use this now over any other uh, method of converting to black and white. So let's go ahead and delete this traditional black and white conversion layer, leave this color fill, and let's go ahead and rename it. Okay, so now that we have a black and white layer set up that it's gonna actually show us our color luminosity, let's go ahead and make a new curves layer because I want to actually even out the overall uh, exposure of the image and relieve some of the shadows before I do my traditional dodge and burn. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new curves layer 
and I'm going to go ahead and bend this upwards along this line instead of like that because once again, if you notice, it creates a much harsher curve heading upwards than if you come over here and just kind of raise it up halfway. It's just a much more uh, gradual change. So let's go ahead and confirm that. And then let's make sure our layer mask is selected and then hit Control I to invert it. And then let's go ahead and hit B for our brush tool and then hold down Shift Zero One. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna set our flow to 1% and that's gonna make it so it's much more gradual when we paint. So let's go ahead and zoom in. And as you'll notice, we have this kind of dark spot under the eye. Uh, it's a little patchy here on the side of the nose. Uh, we have a few other spots we can kind of even out here that we're gonna do with this. Uh, so let's go ahead and resize to about the size of where we wanna paint. And then let's just kind of run the tool over it. I'm just gonna kind of go back and forth very slowly uh, until we start to actually see it making a difference to the luminosity of the area. And this is a real big pain in the ass, but uh, I overall find it's worth doing because it uh, helps even out your subject skin a lot. So just go ahead and kind of dodge and burn a little bit. Even out these shadows and highlights. And you'll see this is very, very slow uh, because of the curve that I made uh, is not very bright. So we're just kind of having to go over this quite a lot. And this is why uh, curves adjustments for dodge and burn can be much more accurate, um, but I find they tend to take more time. So that's the difference we've already made. Uh, that could be a little more blended. And we're just going around kind of evening out this light still. Uh, and any kind of areas like here where it's like a little blemish, you can also kind of go over like this. And let's zoom in a bit. And just a little bit over top of these blemishes kind of relieves them. Uh, and really this is just like skin tone differences, which everyone has. It's not a big deal, so. Go ahead and toggle this on and off and see the difference we made. And now I think I created a little too much of a highlight there. So I'm going to go ahead and hit B, make sure I'm still on brush, then hit X to swap my brush back and forth to black. I'm going to paint just a little bit on there. And let's go ahead and disable the black and white conversion so we can actually take a look at how this is affecting it in color. And see, it just kind of really uh, evened up the dark circles under the eyes, that little spot right there. Uh, and some of the spots up there. Actually, I didn't get that spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in and in color You can actually do this too. It's not only in black and white. You could do this without the black and white I just find it easier to kind of judge how much I'm affecting an area when I'm in black and white Okay, now if we back up some more, yeah, that definitely did a good job at it. Um, so now that we have that settled, what I would like to do is actually hide this layer just because I want it in a separate group for uh, evening skin. So I'm just gonna actually name that even skin tone. Okay, and the reason I want that separate is I want to be able to do my dodge and burn basically on a fresh layer. So if I want to undo it, I'm not going to uh, paint over any of the uh, previous adjustments I've already made. And I'm noticing there's actually a little bit there that seems like I could raise it up a little more. So I'm going to zoom back in and paint with that white brush on these spots here. Even it out a little bit more. Okay, 
Um, so now that we got that settled, we can start our global dodge and burn, which is going to be where we actually contour the face. So let's go ahead and make a, another curves adjustment layer here. And let's brighten it up about halfway up. Go ahead and invert it. Control I. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to select the brush tool with B, resize our brush. Uh, and let's go down here to our burn. I'm going to rename these just so I don't get them confused. Let's name that one burn, name this one dodge. Go down to our burn layer. And let's contour the face now. So I want to turn up my flow because I think one uh, it would take way too long. So I think probably shift two, so like a 20% flow because these curves layers are so uh, sensitive to uh, just how much they're actually applying. I think this will probably uh, be a little bit more. I might need to adjust it more, uh, but I'm not sure. Uh, so let's go ahead and try that. Let me switch to white on my brush uh, palette here by hitting X. And maybe 20 is too much. So actually let's do shift one, uh, do 10%. And I always like to go around the side of the nose, like that over there. Um, anywhere I see shadow, I like to run my brush along. Oops, accidentally turned off the black and white layer. Okay, and that's making a pretty significant difference, but uh, personally, I don't think it's strong enough. So later on, we're going to have to adjust that and see what we can do about it. We could either duplicate the layer or what we can do is adjust the curve, uh, which is why a lot of people like using curves instead of using the soft light method. But for me, the soft light method, I can just move my opacity around and get the same thing. Okay, so I think I'm basically done with this. And uh, like I said, we can either go ahead and double click here and we can continually lower this uh, burn layer until we're actually happy with the amount that it's doing it. Or the other option would be to go ahead and duplicate the layer and then adjust the opacity from there until we're happy. And honestly, I think just duplicating it kind of did a pretty good job. Um, maybe something like 70. Okay, that's actually probably a little too much. Let's do like 50. And let's go ahead and group these burns. And let's turn off the black and white conversion layer just to actually see the effect it's having on the image. And I think overall that's probably too much. So let's lower the opacity of the group as a whole to like 80. And I know I could go back and adjust that one or maybe positively remove the extra burn layer I made, but uh, I'd rather just do this because it's faster. 70 looks good. Okay, so let's turn back on the black and white. Let's go select our dodge layer. Let's hit B. Go ahead and zoom in. Use the brush here. Go along any highlights we want to accent. Uh, any areas we want to maybe even out a little bit. Also kind of add a little bit of contour there. Actually, I don't like the way that looks, so I'm going to undo that. And I'm still at 15% flow, but I'm, it seems like this is actually brightening uh, quite a bit more than the burn brush was darkening. Uh, i got to be careful of that shadow area. You don't want to burn, or you don't want to dodge too much in shadows, I should say, because it kind of starts to look weird. Um, I'm noticing these spots on the side of the mouth that I'm kind of not liking the way they look. So I'm going to go ahead and hit shift zero one to change my flow back to 1%. And then I'm going to actually go ahead and dodge these areas the same way we burned the other areas to uh, lighten them a little overall. And this is just evening out the skin tone and uh, how these areas look um, as a whole. All right, I think that looks good. 
Let's go ahead and turn off the color fill there. You see that added some nice highlight to it. And the thing that I um, tend not to like about curves is I find uh, it, it increases saturation a lot and like kind of starts to make things look a little, uh, I don't know, I'd say uh, too colorful at times. So let's go ahead and group these all together. Okay, so now that we got that group, let's go ahead and turn it on and off. And you can see just how much of a huge difference that already made. Uh, I do feel like it's getting too saturated, so I would like to make a quick adjustment layer of hue saturation. And let's go ahead and turn down the saturation by about 10. And let's go ahead and invert it. And we're still on a 1% flow, so we want to hit Shift-0 to set it back to 100. And let's just kind of go ahead and paint over the face to kind of undo any uh, extra saturation that the uh, dodging and burning did. And if you actually look at it when we toggle it as a whole, it kind of uh, went a little too far. So we can actually go ahead and uh, raise that up to about like minus 4. There, And that's actually more along the lines of what we started with. And that's basically all there is to it when it comes to dodging and burning with curves. And I hope this was able to help you guys. If it was, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already. Feel free to share this on Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, any social media you see fit. As long as my work is being shared and people are learning, I'm happy. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.